Hey kids, welcome to a lesson eight, Boolean expressions and if statements, number nine. You try it. This is a slightly more involved example. You'll need to study the starting design and code a little bit, but you only have to insert a single if else statement and move some lines of code into the appropriate if or else clause to make it work. We have a do this, Study the starting code first to see what it does. We always do that anyway. You can run it to see what happens before doing anything. It just won't work right. Notice there are function reset. This hides the images. We made a function because we want to run this code from two different event handlers. Hmm. We'll have to see what that is all about. We have to add an if else statement in the roll button event handler to check the random number that represents a dice roll and see if it matches the user's guess in the drop down menu. If they guess correctly, it looks like they get a trophy image and plus six to their score. Otherwise, they get a frowny face and subtracting one from their score. Too bad. We have a couple setup notes here. All UI elements are added for you. Images are hidden, flip to design mode to see. All lines of code except for the if else statement and condition are also provided. You'll need to move them around once you've added the if else statement. Notice the global score variable, which will keep track of the score between clicks. And we've added comments in the code to help you out. You can remove them if you like. No way we like our comments here. We do have a hint. But let's go ahead and see if we can't figure this out on our own first. Taking a look at the code here, this is the variable, the global variable they were talking about. Variable score, it's currently set to zero. The reset function here looks like what it does is hides the elements frowny face and trophy and then sets the score label and score label looks like this right here to nothing, which is zero or blank. Another comment says add an if else statement inside the event handlers here. So on the event roll button, and this is our roll button, looks like we pick a number, hit roll dice right there. And if the variable die value, and I assume die value is going to be a random number between one and six. So the computer here is going to pick a random number between one and six and then store that. We're gonna set the text of dice roll label, looks like that right there, to whatever the die value is. So whatever the computer picks, it looks like it will go right there. Next, we have another if the guess is equal to die value. We are going to show the element trophy image and set the score to a plus six. So this looks like what we need to add to the if part. The else part looks like it gets a frowny image and the score minus one. At the end here, it says update the score label to the new score. So this is setting text of score label, which down here is going to be the score and score is whatever these are here. It's either plus six or minus one. So it looks like it keeps track of it there. You do not need to modify this code below. And this is just the on the event, the drop down menu here. We are changing it, not clicking it. So this is looking like this is uh, storing our guess. And then we have our reset and we go back. Hmm. Pretty good. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to put our if else statement in. So I'm just gonna make a little room here just to give us some space. I'm gonna go to my controls, find my if else, and I'm gonna put this right here. I know this is my if part, so we can just move this up right now to make this look better, and our else part the same. Now that we got that in there, we really don't need the comment. So that one and only that one we will delete. That takes care of moving our if and else around. I know one thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to get this number here. So whatever the guess is, I'm going to need to store that. I am also probably going to need to access this 
random number here or this die value. And then I probably have to compare them. First thing I do is I want to get this text from this down here. So if we go to our drop down here, we can get our get num, and we're going to put that in our if statement. And that label is going to be our, and if we go to our design, dice roll label. And whatever this number is now, we're going to store it right there. And then what we want to do is we want to make sure we can compare it to the random number. And in this one, we want it to be equal to because if our guess was right with the random one, we want our score to go up. And if it's not, we want it to go down. We're not worried about greater than or less than, just that it is equal to. And what would that be equal to? Well, whatever this die value is right here. And this will be the random number from our random number right there. So die val is just a random number and we are just comparing it right there. I think that's all we really needed to do to make this work. Let's go ahead and test our code and see if our hypothesis is correct. Let's hit run. Let's guess three here. Roll the die, three, Whoop, we got a six, so right on. And our score added by six, and there's our trophy. Looks like this worked right, and I guessed right. Let's run it again, reset it to, roll the die here. It's a one, our score is six though. That does not look like that is working like it should. Hmm, wonder why it isn't updating our score. Let's go ahead and look at our code here. We have a variable die value, which is going to be a random number between one and six. We are going to set the text of our dice roll label, and our dice roll label here is this right here, and that is going to be whatever die value is. We are going to get the number dice roll label. Hmm. I don't think we want to get the dice roll label. I think what we actually want to get is this um, drop down menu right here, the guest drop down, because that's actually what we're comparing it to. So we're comparing not the label here, because that's always going to come up with what we rolled. So that's always going to give us a six. So that makes sense why that's happening. Now we're going to get the number here and then compare it to the die value, which is the random number. At that point, we get a plus six for the score or minus one if we guess wrong. Let's go ahead and run it and see if we are right. We're going to guess two, roll the die. You rolled a six, oh, sad face. And there's our minus one. Let's hit reset, run. Guess it again. Oh, there we go. Finally, 45 clicks later, we got one right. Uh, it did add to our score there. Looks like everything is working as intended. It went from negative 12 to negative six, so we are adding the plus six of the score. Looks like our code is working right now. Looking back up here, we did look at our reset function and how it worked. We added an if else statement to the roll button handler. And when they guess correctly, it shows a trophy image and adds six to the score. Otherwise, it gives a frowny face and subtracts one. And we learned a little something about making sure our labels are correct in the process. I think that's everything code.org wanted from us. Let's see if they want anything else. Nope. Good job, kids. I know this was a hard one. I'll see you on the next lesson.